Right, so, so let's look at how we can use cumulative encryption using a, a stream cipher such as ChaCha20. So what is cumulative encryption? Well, it's, it's a method where we can take a key. So let's say we have Bob's key. So we take our message and we encrypt with Bob's key. So we'll call that KB. And we end up with this. We then take Alice's key, KA. And we will then encrypt to get that. Now, if we use something like AES, we've got to reverse it back in the reverse order that we applied. So we now apply Alice's key again and do an inverse or a decryption. And then we must take Bob's key and then do the inverse again. Okay, so we encrypt with Bob's key. We then encrypt with Alice's key. With AES, DES and so on, we then decrypt with uh, Alice's key and then decrypt with Bob's key. We can't swap these two keys around. With cumulative encryption, what we can do is that we can apply the keys in any order and we can decrypt with uh, Bob's key here and then with uh, Alice's key. So this is an encryption process. Encryption with key A here. And then this is a decryption process with Bob's key. And then that goes into a decryption process with Alice's key. So with this, what we could do is that we can have data and then someone can apply their key and then someone else can apply their key and so on to create this onion effect. And normally what we do is that we would take the keys off in reverse. So on something like a Tor, Tor routing, the keys would have to come off in reverse. So the purple key would come off first, then the blue key, and then the green key. But with cumulative encryption, we can take the keys off in any order that we want. So we could take the green key off first, and then we could take the purple key off and then eventually we could take the blue key off and end up with our data uh, back again. So there are some methods where we get this type of operation automatically or where we modify an existing method. So we're all used to the RSA method. Uh, the, we can modify it so it becomes the Shamir revestment or the min method to give us this type of encryption. So with RSA, what we have is, a, is two prime numbers, P and Q. We then calculate P times Q, and that becomes our modulus. We then calculate a value called phi, which is P minus one times Q minus one. And now we pick a value of E, which doesn't share a factor with phi and then what we do is we do d times e mod phi is equal to one we call this the inverse of e mod phi and we can do a calculation to find that our encryption becomes m to the power of e mod n and our decryption becomes c to the power of d mod n. So that's the normal way that we do uh, RSA. Unfortunately, if we have two different 
n values, then this operation doesn't work. So we can't use it with this type of encryption, only with public key encryption. With SRA, what we do is that we share the value of n so that uh, both Bob and Alice will have uh, will know the values of P and Q and able to value uh, create the value of N. Bob creates E1 and Alice creates E2. And that's different this time. And then, as we did here, Bob will derive D1 and Alice will derive D2. His encryption key will be D1N and his decryption key will be D1N and her encryption key will be E2N and decryption key will be E2D2N. The way it works is, is because of logarithms that it works. So if we did that, that's the first cipher. The second cipher we now encrypt with Alice's key and the way that logs work is that that becomes that and if we take logs that becomes e1 e2 mod of n you can see here it doesn't matter the order that the e1 and e2 are in we can actually take the values off uh, in whatever way that we actually want. The weakness here is that we must share the values of P and Q between Bob and Alice and they select different encryption values here. And the problem with that is that we typically pick uh, fairly low values of E. If we pick low values then it's possible for Eve to be able to try different values until we get the right one. So this method has never really been uh, implemented because of its security weaknesses. So here is our code to implement this and we'll have a look at that uh, in, a, in a little minute but this is how we do our RSA code. So let's have a look at how we can do this with a stream cipher. So with a stream cipher we take a key and a salt value and then we put it into a key derivation function. And this produces a key stream of infinite length if we need it. So that both Bob and Alice share the key some uh, original passphrase or something to, to start the, uh, the generation of the key and a salt value. The salt value is typically stored uh, along with the, with the stream. So that creates an infinitely long uh, key stream. And then all we have is an exclusive OR gate where we take our data stream and we take our key stream and we XOR them uh, together. That's the XOR operation. So let's say that uh, we had this as our data and so we generate our key stream. Let's say we end up with something like this. This is our key stream, this is our data. The way XOR works is that zero, zero gives us zero. So one, 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 zero, one, 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 zero. The great thing with XOR is that if we XOR the same uh, bit with the same value, then we end up with the original bit back again. So that becomes a one, that becomes zero, one, one, zero, zero. So this would be our encrypted cipher stream. If we then take this stream back again, and do an XOR, then we should end up with the original 
stream back again, which is the same as that. So that's the decrypted stream. Okay, so this is fast. So we don't have to bother about uh, block sizes. It's real time, so every bit that comes in can be decoded uh, instantly. And this is typically three times faster than AES. And it's often now used in SSL uh, type connections. So how does this work in terms of uh, of the, uh, the encryption that we're looking at? So let's say that uh, we have this as our data stream. And Bob will apply his key. So let's say it's that. To cipher, then we end up with this. And now Alice, let's see her key stream is, is this. So this is cipher one, and we end up with zero, one, zero, sorry, one, zero, zero. This is cipher two. And it shouldn't matter in the order that we reapply uh, the keys back again. We should. We always will get back to the original data. So to decrypt, we'll take Bob's key, and that gives us zero, one, one, zero, one, zero. That's a decrypted one, and we'll now take Alice's key back. That gives us one, zero, one, one, zero, one. And if we now look at it, that is the same as that. So it doesn't, it shouldn't matter which order we encrypt and we decrypt. We will always get uh, the same value back. And it's basically if we take the data, and it's close of order with, uh, with a key, a value. If we XOR again with the same value, we get D back. D plus K1, exclusive OR, K2, exclusive OR, K1, exclusive OR, K2, gives us the data back. Okay, so it's this uh, stream cipher that allows us to do the uh, keys in, in any order. Okay, so this is the uh, SRA method. Uh, so here's my P and Q. I'm generating them as two random uh, prime numbers with a set number of bits. We work out phi. We pick a value for E for Bob and then work out Bob's decryption key as the inverse of the E, e value mod uh, by. Alice picks her value, which is different from this one, but keeps the same phi value and works out her, her key then. We'll take the message and we'll convert it into bytes to be able to be encrypted. So the first cipher we encrypt with Bob's E volume, and then we encrypt with Alice's E volume. Now we decrypt with Alice first, and then Bob. So this is the right way to this is the right way to do it. But down here, we encrypt with Bob, then Alice, and then decrypt with Bob, and then Alice. Okay, so let's see if this actually works. So here's a, an example here. We'll take a message of hello and we'll do it both ways and you can see that we end up with the same uh, deciphered volume. As I said, the second time we do it, we do it in the reverse order. So the weakness is that uh, the value of E is fairly low in this case and that causes a problem because of the shared uh, n value. For our uh, ChaCha20 
uh, version. So we start off uh, by taking Bob's password and creating a, 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 a key from that. It's like the passphrase that goes into the key generation function. And then we'll create a random nonce value that we'll, both, we'll use for both of them. So the advantage with this is that each time, although we're using the same passphrase, then we'll get a different cipher. So then we start and we take Bob's key and that will create our new cipher for us here and then also for, for Alice. So this will be an infinitely long uh, key stream uh, that, that we'll use to XOR with the data stream. So here is our uh, XORing of the, of the message. So this is Bob ciphering here. We then cipher with uh, Alice's key. So this is encryption one, this is encryption two. Now what we'll do is that we'll regenerate uh, the, the, the stream again and we'll do it in the wrong order, which is uh, Bob's first in XOR with his key stream and then XOR with Alice's and we'll see if it works. Okay, and here it's here. Uh, here's our message. This is uh, Alice's passphrase, and here is Bob's. And there we go, and we can see that we decrypt it back. It goes Bob, Alice, Bob, then Alice. So it's in the, the wrong order as we would see before, but it doesn't matter the order that we decrypt, it will always uh, come back. Okay, so it was. Uh, Bob, Alice, then Bob, then Alice.